Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa with the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In a previous video, I showed how the jet streams are breaching the equator. And in this particular video, I will describe observations showing this type of behavior and much more behavior. In fact, many cases where the troughs of the jet streams in the Northern Hemisphere actually cross the equator and interact with the ridges from the jet streams in the Southern Hemisphere. So in order to learn more about the jet streams, I highly recommend that you just go to Wikipedia and look at jet streams, look at images uh, like the following. What you can see here is you can see the polar jet stream moving around, circumventing the globe. And if I go down here, this is a schematic diagram showing the polar jet stream and the subtropical jet streams in both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. When, the, when we're in a Northern Hemisphere winter, when we're in the boreal winter, then the uh, jet streams are, they, they come down downwards as the cold air forces them downwards to lower latitudes and in the summer they travel north and think of them as a wall dividing cold dry air in the north and warm humid air in the south. This is a cross-section view here showing it's very hot at the equator so the height is much higher. At the uh, poles it's very cold so we're talking about about 17 kilometer distance here and about seven kilometer distance here. And we have the Hadley cell, the air rises, moves to forward, cools down, descends, and it comes down in this Hadley cell. And you have a feral cell and you have a polar cell moving like gears and you have the polar jet here and the subtropical jet here. But like I say, read this section yourself and get a good feeling for how, how it, uh, you know, what the jet streams are and what they do. And you can see these meanders in the jet stream called Rosby waves and occasionally cold areas can detach and you can get these areas breaking off, things like that happening. Um, and uh, to calculate, you know, why the system is set up this way, hot air rises, the equator is the hottest, the air rises there, knowing that there's three cells um, as a model of the global circulation you can figure out which way everything is moving. You also have to know hot air, you know, air moves from hot areas to cold areas and the earth is rotating. So things in the Northern hemisphere are deflected to the right by the Coriolis force. Okay, so now on to the observations. So you might recognize this image. So this image is from it's from June 28th, 8 o'clock local time, 250 millibar height, it's the winds. You can go to Earth Null School and pull up this data yourself. So this is the image that I showed in the previous video on jet stream breaching the equator. So you see the jet stream coming down and breaching the equator. Now, meteorologists are saying, well, this happens all the time with monsoons and things. I'm, I will show here that it's got nothing to do with monsoons, what's happening right now. So let's look at some previous uh, data here. Observations from this model, if, if, it, if it comes up. Let me bring this up. There we go. Okay, so this is um, 0525. This is May 25th, 2016 at 2000 local time. I'm looking at the jet streams in each case, 250 millibar pressures. Okay, so what's happening here is you're seeing that there's lots of interaction across the equator with these jets. So you get the, um, you get the, the, the jet coming across here and uh, coming down, merging with the Southern Hemisphere jet. You also get the jet coming this way and then coming this way and coming right down and crossing the equator joining with the jets in the Southern Hemisphere. There's lots of mixing 
across the equator here, this has nothing to do with the uh, monsoons. Okay, so let's look at the next case. Okay, so this is back in April 18th, 2016. Once again, the jet streams, these are all of the jet streams. And in this case, what you can see is, you can see here the jet coming down, going across and connecting with the Southern Hemisphere jet stream. There's almost like a ridge from the Southern Hemisphere subtropical jet coming up here, a ridge of breaching the equator, connecting with the, the, the lower part of the jets in the Northern Hemisphere, and then coming back down. And you can see a trough coming here. So you can get this kind of, uh, you know, loop here where this, this re the jets are circumventing this region here. A lot, a lot of mixing is going on there. Um, what I want to show you is this is the 18th. I'll go forward a day by clicking here and close the menu here. And now you can see what's happening. The pattern is changing. You get a, you get a, a, a trough coming here in the Northern Hemisphere. You get a ridge coming up here in the Southern Hemisphere and they're combining here and part of the air, there, there'll be a mixing. Some of the air from the Southern Hemisphere goes up here. Some of the air from the Northern Hemisphere goes down here. You know, a clear, a clear exchange of energy um, just to the west of South America. Once again, nothing to do with the monsoon. But remember, we have a very strong, we have an El Nino going on, and that causes the water to be warmer over a larger area, which causes the, the jets to come further south in the North Hemis Northern Hemisphere and further north in the Southern Hemisphere, and thus joining. And if I go forward another day to here, okay, so this is April 20th now, you can see a very strong trough coming down here. And how far down does that go? You know, the extent is, it goes well into the Southern Hemisphere, 16 and a half degrees south roughly. And you get this air breaking off here and coming up. And uh, there's lots of things going on here. There's lots of mixing. Okay, let's look at another case here. So this is uh, March 11th. Okay, so what do we have here happening? Once again, there's a lot of activity around South America, right? The water is very warm, not just at the equator. It's spread out over the Pacific. Very strong El Nino happened. And so this you get a dipping down here, a trough here, and it connects with a ridge here, uh, mixing the air. And then you get uh, some other, other things going on here. Okay, let's just keep looking at other cases here. Okay, so this is, now we're March 3rd. And what is going on here? First of all, Remember the model that I showed you showing the polar jet and the subtropical jet? Well, that's a theoretical model. I mean, what's happening here is, you know, as you go up through the entire, you know, from, from very low latitudes, almost at the South Pole, to very high latitudes close to the North Pole, you get very high winds. In fact, the winds are, you know, in these areas here are... 60 kilometers, these are a uh, couple hundred kilometers, 250 kilometers an hour. So, but you're getting, you're getting lots of splitting of the jet stream here where you have a trough and you have a ridge. You're getting a lot of, in fact, this air is coming here and it's coming and it's creating another ridge. So there's, or, or there's a trough here and there's a sub trough here well into the Southern hemisphere. I mean, look how low this is going almost 30 degrees south. You know, because of the curvature of this, this isn't really part of the Southern Hemisphere jet stream. This is really an artifact of the Northern Hemisphere jet stream going down to 30 degrees south in the Southern Hemisphere. Tremendous 
tremendous mixing of air between the two hemispheres. And you see that this is a ridge from the southern hemisphere jet stream. And so the ridge and the trough are kind of merging um, here. And then we're getting the strong flow out here and a weaker flow up here. So this is very clear evidence of the interaction between the jet streams in the two hemispheres. Okay, back, this is um, February 29th. And what is going on here? This looks very complex, but you know, there's cer it certainly doesn't look like we have an independent operation of the two hemispheres, the, the, the high altitude winds in the two hemispheres. Here we get the ridge from the southern hemisphere, and we get a trough, we get basically the trough of the jet stream in the northern hemisphere, and part of it breaks off and follows the ridge all the way into the southern hemisphere. Very strong interaction here. In fact, the winds here are, I believe, uh, you know, over 100 km, 120 kilometers an hour. So, so that's, uh, you know, about 60, 70 miles an hour, basically. Okay, so let's continue on to some more examples. Um, you know, I encourage you to find additional ones yourself. I'm just going back and looking mostly of this year. Now, what is going on here? Okay, this is a very complicated pattern, very convoluted pattern. You know, what does it matter that the equator is there? You know, we're getting a complete mixing. The, the temperatures of the Arctic are, are so high the jet streams have become so distorted, the El Nino has warmed the equator and all the oceans around. So it, this, is like, this is what will happen in a much warmer world when we lose sea ice. There will be very, very little temperature gradient with latitude. The jet streams will cover that whole space and they will mix and maybe set up stationary patterns, somewhat um, stationary with the southern hemisphere, but if the Arctic is still warming much, much faster, then this, the, it'll be a transitory thing and very difficult and complex. But of course, the jet streams are important. They guide storms, um, and when it's warmer, there's more water vapor in the atmosphere, so the storms are greater intensity. But here you can see, you can see a, sort of a subridge here, another subridge here, you know, a trough here from the northern hem hemisphere combining, and then you get, uh, you know, you also get excursions over here. I mean, this is, you know, this looks nothing like the model that I showed you. Um, this is what our present climate system is like. The jet streams are wildly distorted and acting like this. This is, is, is very, this is new behavior for Un, with our new, under our new climate, with our abrupt climate change, this is what we're seeing. I'm just showing you observations. I'm throwing in some interpretation, but it's mostly observation. Going back to February 20th, then you can see, you know, very strong trough here, uh, very, you know, ridges. Once again, there's joining, and I could just go on and on and on. Um, I'll just show you a couple more. So here we go, you know, all kinds of activity going on here. You could go up, almost take a cross section and uh, have very high winds at the 250 millibar height. So very high jet stream activity, but there's, you certainly can't talk about, uh, here's, here's another example. And finally, the last example I have is here. So what does it all mean? Well, According to, we know that the Arctic is warming very, very fast. We get Arctic temperature amplification. As we lose uh, sea ice and snow cover exponentially, we get more and more warming in the Arctic. We know that equalizes the temperature with latitude or it brings it closer to equilibrium as this is warming much faster and this isn't. So the jet streams start filling up that whole area. They become wavier and they're connecting with those in the Southern hemisphere. That's the bottom line. Thank you.